So I was reading this article that was written by Gail McGovern and John Quelch, and it's incredibly relevant to what's going on right now in the world of marketing and specifically in the world of CMOs and CMO leadership. What makes the article really interesting is that it was written in 2004, and it's as applicable today as it ever has been. The article itself talks about key success factors for CMOs, key pitfalls that they may run into, and ultimately three different types of CMOs a more VP of marketing services, a classic CMO, and the super CMO. And really this has kind of opened our eyes as to what we're looking for and how we're setting the benchmark when we go for a CMO executive search. Historically, as we've done CMO searches and we've done many and been very successful within that process, we've looked at A players versus everybody else. And we believe that if you've been a CMO for at least three years, and now you're looking to take on another CMO challenge, most likely at a bigger company. Within that world, 20% of CMOs that have that experience would fit into the A player bucket. And so that was historically been our benchmark. Now as we go forward and the world is evolving and digital is transforming how we look at marketing, we needed something more. We needed a finer lens on that to make sure we're getting our clients the right talent. And so we're embracing this term, the super CMO, to make sure that as we're finding candidates, we know that they can exceed expectations of our clients. So the super CMO now we feel like is only maybe 10%, possibly less of the CMO universe out there. The super CMO is gonna do everything that your classic CMO can do from brand to advertising, to digital, to leadership, to finding the team but they can take it a step further, right? They can innovate marketing in ways that you haven't thought of yet. And it may be marketing, it may be products or services that they're innovating for the organization. They can go ahead and take the organization to a different level based on how they collaborate with other senior executives and how they carry marketing through the organization. And at the end of the day, they're truly, truly bench strength for the CEO. Now that we've been able to define what the super CMO is, and we will link to the article that I referenced below, I recommend it as a read for any CEO, CMO, or anyone who wants to become a CMO someday. Now then, you look at your organization and you're probably asking, do I have a super CMO or do I even need one? And if you have one, you, don't, you already know it. There's no doubt in your mind that we have this person on board because of how well marketing is going and how well marketing is integrated to the rest of the organization and how quickly your organization is growing. If you're not achieving double digit growth, you probably don't have a super CMO. So then the question becomes, do I need one? And maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's kind of a case by case basis. So you'll need a super CMO if you're in a space where digital is a key component to your marketing mix. If you're ending up with half or almost half of your budget in digital, you're gonna need a super CMO. If you are in a space where you're highly competitive and market share is really important, you're gonna need a super CMO. And if you're targeting a younger generation, meaning if millennials and Generation Z are the target for your marketing efforts, you're gonna need a super CMO in order to be able to grow and take it to the next level.